Hey, hey, happy Monday, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to you. Happy Monday to you. Come on in to the faith room. New day, new week, but the same God. Come on in the room today. Come on in the room. Good morning, Roxy. You're the first one on today. Lay number two in the building. Good morning. How's my volume, Lay? Am I sounding okay? I'm in a new location today. I'm in a remote location. Shh, can't tell nobody. Can y'all hear me okay? Can everybody hear me okay? Tracy, good morning. Sherry, good morning. I hope you're feeling better, Sherry. Jan Chapman, good morning. Pastor Anthony, good morning to you. Pastor Oris, our satellite pastor in Atlanta. Amen. Oris Pruitt, who is a brother and a friend. Tanya Murphy, good morning. Good to see you. Send my love to Coach Aaron. Let Coach know. Hey, Tanya, let Coach know. All right. Tell them it's in full effect, Tanya. OK. All right. Joseph. Good morning, Pastor. How you doing? Good morning. Can y'all hear me? OK. Can everybody hear me? OK. Lady Z. What's up? Good morning. Sadell. Let's go. Sylvia. Good morning to you. All right. Y'all let me know if you can hear me. OK. All right. Sound is good. All right, Tracy. All right. Thanks for keeping me on point. All right. Good deal. Charles Gooden. What's up, man? You are. Uh, we're chilling yesterday, man. Had me wanting to come over to your crib yesterday, Charles. Had it had it looking nice on your deck yesterday. Delaya, good morning. Y'all, Delaya will be leaving. She's one of our young adults. She will be leaving, uh, headed toward a program that is getting her closer to med school. I'm going to be talking about that over the next week, Delaya. We want to send you off well, and your pastor's going to make sure that that happens, okay? We want to send you off well. We're proud of you. Uh, Miss Pearlie is on. We're going to get together and make sure uh, we send you off well. Jan, uh, young adult leaders, Verna, we want to make sure we send her off well, okay? She's leaving in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Michelle, good morning to you. Tracy Lewis, good morning. Good to see you. Romilla, me, me, good to see you this morning. All right. All right, y'all, we have a special guest, part two today. Um, Lakeisha Johnson is going to be back with us this morning, and if she's on, I'm going to ask her to go ahead and request to come in. Uh, Friday was so powerful. Good morning, Fifi. Friday was so powerful, man. Tracy, good morning. Tracy Lewis, it was so powerful. We had to bring her back today. I'm not going to even waste any time. She's ready to go, and uh, I want to get her in. Listen, if you have any questions on healing, Anything that's dealing with you getting back into position spiritually, emotionally, or physically, uh, I need you to send those questions in today. Lavelle, good morning. Pastor Spreeze, good morning. Julie, let me get our guest in today and uh, go ahead and share the video, everybody. For the Lord to do something incredible uh, on this morning uh, as the Lord moves. Hey, woman of God. Hey, man of God. You are in the room today. I see you. And uh, hopefully everyone else can see you and uh, we hear you just fine. I do on good. my end. Uh, good. Y'all say good morning to our guest. She's back. Lakeisha, my you just, goodness. You need to be out in L.A., girl. I need to go. Ah, uh, thank Listen. you. <laughs> Pillow talk, baby. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> I'm ready to, too, right? Trial. I know that's right. Listen, you bless so many people Friday. Uh, uh, so many people were touched by just your transparency. But just your your biblical knowledge, Lakeisha, you know how many scriptures you quoted on Friday? My you cousin quoted. called me and told me that. She was like, do you know you were given the word? And I'm like, Man, I just, whew. <laughs> you, you were quoting the Bible. You were helping wow. people. And everybody wanted you back. And uh, wow. I, I have the text messages to prove it. They were like, I'm setting my alarm. I'm going to make oh, sure. Wow. I'm going to make sure I'm up. So, woman of God, listen, we are going to receive questions today, and uh, hopefully okay. uh, you will be honest enough today, everybody, to send your questions in. Uh, you know how the faith room works. We, we don't judge people in here. Absolutely. We're trying, we're trying to get better. We're trying to come closer to God. Bring my camera down. Have your faces cut off. Thank you. Is yeah. that better? Yes, perfect. Now? Yes, yes. Why didn't nobody? Nobody. I was going to tell you, you're Z, perfect now. <laughs> Z, thank you for looking out for your boo. Yes, go right. Z, go Z. Right. All right, she, she got me right. Y'all want to yes. have my head. I want y'all to see 
Y'all know my head round and everything. Y'all got to get my whole head in the picture now. All right? So a I little bit more. Y'all. She said a little bit more. She said a little bit more, Lakeisha. She's trying to get me right. My, right my wife, though. She, is that good, Keisha? Yeah. Am I good, Look, Probably a tad bit more. A little bit down. Okay. What's yeah, because you're not interfering. There we go. All right. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. We only see half Much your better. face. Your chin is still off. All right. Jesus, I don't know what's mm-hmm. up with that. Is that better? See, you look better on my phone than you do. I just, okay, I see you now. Yes, I can good on my face. All right. Is that better, y'all? Is, can y'all see me now? All right, good. Y'all let me know. Now, I want to be, I don't want to be messing up the, uh, you see how Lakeisha looking? Got her hair right, got her outfit. Her <laughs> her right. Camera, her camera not messing up. All right, everybody can see us okay? Now, we trying to get this right now. We may have a. We may have a talk show brewing right here. We all right? be watching this. So watching get, us, right? I, I see myself fine. Everybody can see us okay? Pastor Sprig, what's going on? Can you see me, Doc? Let me know. Much better. Much better. Okay, good. All right, good. Okay, yeah. All right, listen, y'all. I'm going to release the woman of God right now. Friday, Lakeisha, we had to cut off because you were sharing some good stuff. And time just slipped away. So I'm going to My release goodness. you now to go My ahead goodness. And let the Lord use you today. That was a thought that you left us on. Y'all go ahead and share this. We have 70 on. Yeah, put Let's it get up. on up in the 100 range again today. Yeah. Um, go ahead, woman of God. Lord, touch today. Do what you do best. Oh, I God, see my Lord, brother. Uh, yeah, in, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. You got it, woman of God. It's you. Well, first of all, thank you guys again. Hey, Lady Z, thank you for getting your boo right. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Right? I love yeah. that. Um, we, I want to just kind of give a quick week re- recap and then just share some things that are on my heart to, with you today. And the first thing is I want us to walk in the responsibility that healing is our responsibility. It is not anyone else's responsibility for us to get healed. Wow. And so we don't need to sit and watch and wait on someone to tell us or, or give us permission to heal. Right. Right. Um, right. And even when we don't recognize that we need healing or someone else doesn't recognize that they need healing, um, we have limit resp- limited responsibility to even that. So many of us have um, taken on crosses that I don't know necessarily that we are supposed to carry or to bear. And so I want to give you something I didn't give you. I didn't get to give you Friday because we ran out of time. And right. this was this is what happens if we know somebody connected to us is in pain, needs to be healed, doesn't have revelation. And I just want to give you something to pray. I started a series today on um, why do we stop thinking prayer works, right? Why do we think prayer doesn't work? Um, A lot of what we need to do is move in things in prayer, like silent assassins, right? Because those of those people that don't recognize they need healing, every time you tell them they need to, you need to go get some help, or you need to do a better job, or you're you're not doing and giving me what we need in the relationship. If I don't know that I'm sick or wounded or seeping or leaking out, right? I'm not going to respond to you in anything other than offense. And I'm sorry, but the body of Christ has been the most offended group of people ever because we do not position ourselves to be healed. So here's just a few, a few simple things that you can pray and remembering Ephesians 3 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you be rooted and grounded in love. Right? So the first thing that we're going to pray is that Christ be dwell in their hearts. The revelation of who we are is is in Christ. And most Come of on. us don't realize that, right? We're Come trying on. to get our revelation from external service ser- s- sources or external people. Man right. can never define who you are. And most of us, I'm going to use some words, janky. Most of us are so janky wow. because wow. everything that we were attached to in our environment was janky as well. And so we have general generational hurt, generational trauma, Um, Things that that we walked into for so long because we did not recognize what a healthy self looks like, what a healthy marriage looks like, what raising healthy children in a healthy manner looks like. Like we generation, we talk about generational curses, but we walk in generational trauma. We walk in generational 
um, a lower standard of who God says, are, so says we are. So we're going to pray that God move upon their heart. Ezekiel 36, 24, and 27 is one yes. of my favorite things to pray, right? Because God, in that scripture, he says, I'm going to take you out of your idols, right? And then I'm going to put a new heart in you, a heart wow. of flesh that is responsive. So mm. the next thing is I pray for this person to have a heart of flesh that is responsive, right? Proverbs right. eleven twenty five 25 says, a generous soul will prosper, right? And he who refreshes others himself will be refreshed, right? That's good. So when I refresh or cover you in the word, you're going to be refreshed versus with my mouth. This is the thing, if we don't recognize this ever, and we come to realize people will not respond to health or healing until they realize they're wounded, till they realize they're traumatized, we hear um, people talk about, well, black women got attitudes. There's a reason black women ca carry attitudes because most of us don't recognize that that's been our defense mechanism for wow. so long wow, of dealing dude. with our pain and dealing with our trauma. And we don't pause long enough to catch ourselves and to put ourselves in a place of healing. So I wanted to give us that because I wanted to free us today from the responsibility of trying to shake people healthy or mm. shake people wow. well or wow. brutalize people to get well well you're gonna walk in this healing or i need you, and even in a relationship i need you to understand how you're damaging me i can't because there are scales that are on my eyes and so it's hard in those places it's hard to be in those places it's hard when that's your marriage it's hard when that's your kids but wow. you have to recognize that your responsibility to the marriage your responsibility to the kids your only position is prayer. And I don't know where we got in, in life to think prayer doesn't work. Second, after I pray, then I set up the boundaries. Wow. Wow. Talk about it. Talk about it. I set up the boundaries. I set boundaries. up what I'm comfortable I with. Right? I, I set that. up the boundaries of what I'm comfortable with for the relationship. And you cannot tell me what those boundaries are. Well, how do I put those boundaries up in marriage? Um, I put them up in love, but I realize and recognize, especially if I'm dealing with someone who is narcissistic and a taker, that I'm not going wow. to be able to just give to them Look. unselfishly, right? Look. And I'm gonna pause so you can ask. I'm not no. gonna be able to give to them unselfishly, right? Yeah, that's a good I'm not going to be able to get. So what's what's the boundary that I put in place? Same thing. If I have narcissistic kids, which we probably raised, how do I put the boundaries in place in dealing with these narcissistic kids? Right. Of course, the word tells us above all things, love, love, hopes for the best. Um, love looks like love. That's we right. respond that's in right. love. But at some place, you have to put some boundaries up that say, you know what? It's not OK for you to hurt me. You know what? It's not OK for you to take advantage of me. Wow, you know sis. what? Love, love suffers wrong, but it's not OK for us to be in this space. And I'm not I'm not I'm not OK where we are and how you know whether or not you're dealing with someone who has no regard for you is the moment that you put boundaries in place if they are mad then that is somebody who does not recognize they need help healing and does not know the value wow. of who who you are right so we pray for them we put boundaries that's in good. place and Man, we stand good. guard and we let god we let god do we let god do the work and it's not i cut my emotional myself off emotionally because when we cut ourselves off emotionally we just further perpetuate our sickness wow. right Talk about that a little bit more. Cut what what does cutting ourselves off emotionally? What what are you expound so on the, that a little bit? So the word says that we put a guard over our heart, right? right? But God gave us emotions. We're not supposed to respond emotionally, but God still gave us these emotions. That's There's right. nothing That's wrong it. with That's us it. having emotions. It's how we respond to the emotions. But when I shut myself down emotionally and I act like what you did didn't impact me and I don't articulate to you that it hurt or I walk around as if nothing you said moved me. I am building up or creating a situation where my heart is hardened. God gave us tears. God gave us laughter. That's God good. gave us joy. And for women, we're the feminine side of God. We're the feminine side of God. And so I'll t that's a whole different story. But we become brash when we don't walk in our emotions, wow. when we that's don't good. say Teaching. this hurts, 
when we don't say that this is too much. So I, have, I was a homeschool mom forever. My husband died. My kids went back to school, okay? Wow. When we oh, came geez. back to this situation for virtual learning, all my friends were just, and different people were like, your kids are not going to go to, your kids are going to school. They're not going virtually. Absolutely, my kids are going to school. And here is why. In this season in my life, I didn't have the capacity to keep them at home. And I was going to be real, real where about where I was in my place. It does not mean I'm limiting the power of Jesus. It does wow. not mean I'm not walking in faith. It means I determine where I am in this season in my life. And I assert myself in that position. And then I ask God to give me the grace and the help for that, right? Wow. Well, we won't take the, that to God. We walk around. We soldier up. We don't cry. We don't moat. We don't talk about how we feel. We shut our feelings down. Wow. The moment that you're in a position or a place where you're shutting your feelings down, you're no longer human. Wow. You're no longer, you're wow. no longer I human. That. I love that. I You're becoming that. a robot. And it. every time you do that, your heart is not fertile. God speaks to us through our heart. He longs to minister to us in our heart. When the word is planted, it's planted in our heart. When we see, receive Jesus Christ, we ask him to ask him in our heart. So if the truth, if, if the, the truth is that about our heart, then guess what we need? A responsive and a tender, tender. heart. That's We're good. not going to have a responsive and a tender heart if the circumstances and situations around us we, I'm going to be tough, right? For us as women, we lose the feminine side of ourselves when we become walls, when we become stoic, when we become hard. Well, you don't know how many people broke my heart. I get it. But I'll wow. tell you this. Part of the problem is Talks. because we don't trust God in the relationship. God right. was clear when he talked to us and said, trust no man. Right. That's what he said, right? And so when we put all our hope and trust in man versus putting all our hope and trust in God to bring us Talk to sense. the right relationship, right? Mm -hmm. We'll let the negative effects of a bad relationship harm or hinder us. And it's like, no. So then I become guarded. Well, once I'm guarded, I'm defensive. Once, on, once, I'm de once, once I'm defensive, right? Talk, then there's a venom that's spewing inside of me, right? I become bitter. Once I become bitter, once I become bitter, I become brazen. Once I become brazen, I spread like wildfire. When I start sp spreading like wildfire, I wow. take that toxicity into every relationship that I have. Every relationship that I'm connected to gets a seeping bit of that toxicity. If it's my kids, I spew that bitterness on my kids. I'm never positively esteeming them. I'm not looking or hoping for the best. I'm not putting any work. If Man, it's my marriage, I'm the same way teaching. in my marriage, right? In my you marriage, I act the same way. And the reason that I act that way in my marriage is because somebody told me to just have a just-in-case account. Somebody told me that if he doesn't show up, right, then be prepared to show out. I'm never hopeful thinking that God could bring about a change because my heart is too hardened to receive something that would change my wow. life. Wow. I, I have to ask this, Lakeisha, because th this came in. It's so amazing that you're on this whole healing process. I, I want to ask you this. Um, how, how long how long is the healing process? And, and I want to talk on two sides. Answer this twofold question. The yeah. healing process. It, yeah. It's different for everybody. But, yes. but then to the perpetrators. Yes. I, I have to say this all the time as I help people. And I, I see your question, Crystal Van Dyke. Uh, okay. To the perpetrator. Those yes. who, and I looked up the word perpetrator. A person who carries out a harmful, illegal, or immoral act. The perpetrator. Yes. yes. There are some people who are perpetrators yes and, and, and predatory and, and okay the, come on sis talk to the perpetrator because that i'm sorry i messed up doesn't just automatically to the person you hurt take away that pain so so to the perpetrator talk to them because they need to understand that forgiveness does not mean that who you hurt, they're going to get over it overnight. But then talk to the person who's been hurt because at what point is it not forgiveness 
and you're just kind of holding what that perpetrator did over their head and you never move forward because the perpetrator now has to deal with every time you get in your feelings because you told us to be emotional, Lakeisha. Now right. you bring up what I did. So how do we move forward? Oh, that's good. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm asking, but you know. No, no, I Go know ahead. what you're asking. So I want to do this twofold. I want you to Go know ahead, that any damage and trauma that you have, how my uncle taught me this not too long ago. He said this in church because I believe we're in layers, right? And God always has to peel back the layers. For the number of years you are is probably the number of years of trauma you've experienced. So when we talk about healing, we're talking right. about from the time that you were born from your mother's womb, right? right. That uh -huh. we go, de depending on the type of environment that you were brought up into, every time you experience something negative, something hurtful, something harmful, that's layered on you. And I need to say this first because this is what I know. When traumatic experiences are not properly healed, when the trauma oh. is not dealt with, when we are very early, then you are layered in trauma, right? right? Most perpetrators and predatory people are layered in some kind of trauma. I am a firm believer, hurt people hurt people. Hurt but people predatory, hurt. yes, predatory and perpetrate per, per, people who are perpetrators also usually don't recognize that this way they are this way because the scales are on their eyes and so even when they apologize wow. if the apology does not come with changed behavior i'm gonna say it. this 35 times if i have to if the oh, apology yeah. does not demonstrate any type of changed behavior whatsoever then it's just a surface apology i am not required to i'm not going to say accept but i am not required to trust or believe that this apology is sincere until you demonstrate a behavior that aligns up right if we're talking That's about good. fruit i'm going to ins inspect your fruit it's not enough for me just for you to be because a lot of times we'll do this well they started going to church no, where's the fruit? I'm going to inspect your fruit. I need fruit, to see. Fruit. There is a humility that comes in when I am the perpetrator. You are also going to provide a safe place for the person that you violated. Talk, to be talk. able to talk to you and come to you without you shutting down, without you pushing them back, without you attacking Man. them and telling them what we did. When I'm trying to heal a relationship or talk, heal man. a certain situation, then I'm going to open the door wide up and be vulnerable. And the reason that I am is because this relationship means more to me than my pride, than I my like whatever I stand in. No, I'm going to open up the relationship. So you got to give the person, if you're the perpetrator, you got to give that person some time to be That's able good. to deal with what's happened. Also, if you're the perpetrator and this is a marriage or this is a kid, you also have to put yourself in a position to recognize that if this person was already traumatized, all you did was pour salt, salt on that wound. All, all wow. you did was pour salt on the wound. The second, thi the second thing that I think we forget is when you release a word into the atmosphere. This is why I daily, I'm like, put a guard over my mouth. I'm raising, I have five sons, I'm raising kings. Once you release the word, the word cannot be captured, right? The word cannot be captured. You release that. If you say something bad, that trauma, it's done. By our words, we're going to be acquitted. By our words, oh, we're going to be uh, condemned. There is the that's power word. of life and death in our that's tongue. Word. The minute that I released whatever negative I released in the atmosphere, studies have shown seven to eight positive words have to be implemented to take those words back. Well, if I'm not responsible to you, because it takes a responsibility, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I'm not responsible to who you are as a person, right? And I am still operating on me. It's about me. It's about me. It's about me. It's about me. Then I, can, then I will not guard that it may take time for you to heal, right? Wow. Now, on the other side of this, when dealing with somebody, um, Forgiveness takes time, but forgiveness is also not a feeling, right? And wow, forgiveness has good. to be that's really good. intentional. We want to feel better when we forgive somebody, right? When the word has already told us, you need to forgive so yep. that you can be forgiven. Right. That's the that's word. It.
That's that it. wasn't that wasn't conditional. That's Forgiveness right. is not right. conditional. That's and if right, we're going to be people of faith, we're going right. to have to be grown and eat some food and do things that don't always feel good. So at That's the right. point of I have to decide to forgive you, even if your behavior doesn't necessarily exemplify it. But I do guard myself when your behavior does. If you know somebody is borrowing money from you and you know they never pay you back. You, it, why teach. would you continue to keep lending them money when you know that they're not going to pay you back? So if I put a guard up, I know not to loan you money anymore, right? That's how we look at boundaries. That's how we look at putting things in place. So at the point that I'm in a position and a place, I have to first make a decision to forgive you. Once I make the decision to forgive you, I have to recognize that it's not going to happen automatically. But here are the things that I cannot do. I cannot nurse it. Wow. I cannot wow. nurse it. I wow. cannot nurse it. The, the word tells us to capture every thought. We need to capture everything, anything that's exalting against the knowledge of God. So that's if right. I am in a thought of unforgiveness, the thought of unforgiveness exalts against the knowledge of God when God already told us to forgive unlimited, right? Wow. So I that's cannot it. allow my thoughts to go back to the place of the violation. I cannot keep calling everybody and telling them what happened because every time I tell it, I nurse it. Wow. Every time I tell ah. it, I nurse it. Talk. I'm nursing on it. I'm affirming it in the inside of me. Talk, That's why please. he told us to cast down those thoughts quickly. I cannot, I cannot. The next thing I have to do is I have to divert, disperse it. I have to release it. Right. And Release then I'm it. not going to be able to rehearse it. I cannot keep rehearsing. I, and what I mean by rehearsing, I can't go back and keep replaying every last incident that happened in my life. I can see. I don't realize as the person that's been offended what's happening when I'm nursing it, rehearsing it and not dispersing it. What's happening. And I got that out of wow. Kathy McVeigh's book. I want to. There was Kathy McVeigh wrote that in the book. That's where I read that from. I don't like to plagiarize. So, Come on, sis. I cannot keep nursing it. I cannot keep rehearsing it. I cannot keep doing it because at the point that I do that, it's becoming septic to me. And I don't even realize that I'm becoming paralyzed in my own happiness. My first problem is that I expected another relationship to make me happy. That's wow. my very first problem is that I expected another relationship to affirm and confirm me when the word of God has said my righteousness is in Christ Jesus. God already said who I said I am. If you are dysfunctional yourself, you are not going wow. to be able to affirm me, wow. to build me up and bring me into the fullness of who I think I'm supposed to be. It's just not going to happen until you get healed and healthy yourself. So me, after I just choose not to rehearse it, after I choose not to nurse it, after I choose to disperse it, then I have to make a decision on whether or not I'm going to let your behavior affect my happiness. Wow. That, th That's right? it. If I'm That's going to let your behavior deal with my joy. And I know that is difficult when you live in the house with people, but you're going to have to get you some gumption. You're going to have to get some bulldog faith about your happiness and make a decision that you know what? You can walk around here miserable. You can walk around here with this bad attitude. You can walk around here in this same stale place, but I'm getting ready to move forward. I'm getting ready to walk in the fullness of who God called me to be Christ Jesus. Your behavior is not getting ready to steal another moment. My mother, I think my mother's on here too. Oh. My mother told me something so powerful. Oh, this was yes. over 20 years ago and oh. it changed my life. I called her one day and I said, somebody was making me mad. I said, I'm making, they are making me mad. And she paused me. She said, Lakeisha, nobody has the capacity to make you mad, but you. Oh, mama. Nobody, mama. nobody has the capacity <laughs> to make you mad, but you. When she said that to me, it changed my thought process of how I handle relationships. I made a decision and I have something I quote over myself. I will not get offended. The word tells us to take no offense. The word tells us not to bring offense. So I, I quote over myself the other day. I'm not getting offended. And so when people come to me and say, oh, I'm not trying to offend you. I just look at them and say, you can't because my choice wow. and decision oh, is whether or not you're going to offend me. You don't get the opportunity to offend me because I'm in control of my emotions and what goes on in side of me we have wow. way way more control wow. god would have never told us right he would have never told us romans 12 and 12, he would have never said 
do not be conformed to this world, but be conformed. Renew your mind. Transform your mind in the word. Part of the problem is we don't want to transform wow. our mind in the word. Some of us have been sick, sick for so long and unhealthy for so long and attached to unhealthiness for so long. We take it as norm. Second John 1 and 13. Um, he said it, the we take it as norm. We take we've been in it so long. Say it again. <laughs> we have been in it for so long. Right. That we now <laughs> take it as normal behavior. And so we never move and we never find our place of happiness. Is that what you're telling me? Lakeisha? Absolutely. That's people Absolutely. In stuff that's dysfunctional, but they think yeah. it's normal. And have lived in it as norm because it was perpetuated generationally. And let me tell you a misnomer we have. We can be successful in so many areas of our life. And I have seen it over and over again because our careers are successful, because our ministries are successful. We let our relationships fail. We let the love, the passion, the things that God gave us inside oh, fail because so we, we resonate success by our bank account. Or we resonate, come on now, I'm just being for real. Or we resonate success by just a promotion. And that is not the only thing. I think when Apostle John was saying to us, I want you to do well as your soul prospers. You prosper as your soul, soul prospers, right. Right? right? If my soul is prospering, he said, I want you to be in good health and I want you to prosper. And then the next part of the scripture, he said, I'm glad to see that you're living in the truth. That was the confirming part for me. It wasn't just that he wished that our souls prosper and be in health. He said something significant. The only way that your soul is going to prosper and be in good health is that you live in the truth. Most of us have so many scales on our eyes. We don't know what wow. the truth is. Mm. And we won't go to the word of God to see what God has said about us. So we live defeated. We live non-responsive. We live as ro robots. Um, we saw this. I don't even want to get in this. We get ourselves entangled in relationships that are not not wow. healthy, right? Wow. We'll stay committed to people who are not committed to us. We'll stay um, bound to people who walked out on us a long time ago. We'll fight to be in relationships wow. that are so dysfunctional and un unhealthy that we are committed to our committed to being unhealthy. We we wow. sign off. I'm just going to get up today and I'm going to live toxic. I'm just going to give uh, up today and I'm going to live healthy, unhealthy. Uh, I'm just going to give up today and I'm not going to prosper. I don't. I, there, so I got a little hip hop in me. There was a slogan that you say is not any halfway crooks. And I always say there's no halfway Christians. We either going to live this word out and experience the kingdom here on earth. Or we're going to continue to be in a repetitive measure of being downtrodden and oppressed when Jesus came to set us free. It just does not make sense. And so boundaries have to be in place. But you also have to know that God wants you healed. I run into people all the time. Well, if it's the Lord's will. No, you need to know what the Lord's will says good. about that your so mental good. health. You need to know what the Lord's will says about your physical health. You need to know what the Lord's will says about your financial health, right? That's we start good. talking about, when you talk about when it's the prosperity gospel. No, you better go know what the five, the words. I, there's not one time that I've seen anybody in the Bible that obeyed God that you didn't see the next part of that scripture say, and they lived a prosperous life. That's good. And they were, give, good. And they were given wealth and riches, and That's they had good. plenty of cattle, and they had have plenty of land there was no scripture that that anybody that walked joseph everybody it was nobody that walked hard after god that didn't receive the blessings that they needed to receive for god so if my soul is not prospering right or if my soul is prospering and my wow. money doesn't line up if my soul is prospering and my relationships don't line up if my soul is prospering and my physical body is not lining up then somewhere i'm lacking and i don't have revelation of what the word of god says now for the skeptic because there's always wow. somebody who says well paul said grace is sufficient you're right grace is sufficient and what he means is i'm going to give you enough to sustain you even in your worst situation until the change comes wow. <laughs> until the ch until the change comes and then if He's the change doesn't come teaching. i'm with you i'm with you all the way i'm with you all wow. the way do we have any other questions i don't want to miss questions. I, I do i do i do have a, uh, some questions coming in and i need you to sit someone asked this question lakeisha how would you suggest handling being in a relationship with a narcissist <laughs> when it so becomes first, too much to handle for the non-narcissist. <laughs> uh, so if it's so let me let me say this first too. And you know, you know I'm a Southern Belle. Baby, if it ain't if if you ain't married, you need to go. 
There's nothing binding you if you're not married. That's the first thing I have to say. And I know that sounds easy than said, but at the point that you have to make, make the decision that you're better than that, when we're male or female, that you're better than that if you're not married. Now, if you're married to a person, it looks a little different. How do I make the exit strategy? I am not an advocate for divorce. All my friends will tell you I love marriage through and through. But perhaps we may need to take a step back and get some intervening variables like counseling and everything else. If it's marriage, you're going to have to, hey, can we get some help? And if this person suggests, I'm not getting help, I'm not getting that counseling, then you're going to have to pray and ask the will of your fa the father for your life. I know that persecution comes. I know that trials come. But I don't know that God wants you, especially if it's a physically abusive, abusive relationship. I don't know that God wants you in that relationship and that place at that time. But you're going to have to seek the face of God about that. And then when you get the peace, you have to ask God to give you the strength. We, st we say, wow. stay subjected to stuff without intervening with God. We, you should be taking everything to God. God, how do I handle this? How do I deal with this person? I'm praying over this person. But at no point spend, do you spend any time trying to convince a narcissistic person that they are not narcissistic? And no, you'll, you'll, you'll drive, they will drive you crazy. And the reason why <laughs> is because narcissistic people are Talk. very good, very good at making you feel like you're the problem. Wow. So, why would you even spend some time talking to somebody, trying to convince them that there's something wrong with them? Because the game, the mental games that narcissists play is to keep you under your, their power and wow. to tell you that you're the problem. They're Lakeisha. gonna find something wrong with you. They're never gonna be happy with anything you do. Um, they're always gonna manipulate situations to their benefit. And then the sad part is to make you feel a little bit better, they'll throw you a bone. They'll oh. buy you a gift. Um, they'll make you think they're going to get a little bit better, but it's only to manipulate you to stay. And oh, so you're going to have to position yourself and pray and ask God to give you the strength to the strength wow, that you wow, need wow. to operate in a relationship that God, if God wants our souls to prosper, if it's a marriage, you think he don't want your marriage to prosper. Now, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a dating situation, sis or bro, you're better than that. God is not going to, and, and I'll be honest, when we are in pain and used to pain, right? And for us wow. right now, the, wow. what, the, what the scripture says is almost literally true. Remember the scripture prophesied that there would come a time where there would be like seven women to one man. Right now, we are probably generationally, especially in the African-American culture, living like that, right? Well, unfortunately, because there are seven women to one man or eight men, men to one or whatever the stats say right now, we as women will typically put up with something that makes absolutely no sense. We'll be in a relationship with somebody who devalues us. We'll be in a relationship with somebody that does not have any regard for us. We'll be in a situation with somebody who does not esteem our value, our value in God just to say we have a man because philosophy wise, somebody told us that it was okay to, to okay for us to have a piece of a man better than a man than than having a whole man. I don't want your pieces. I don't want uh, your pieces because I need you to come to me whole so that I can come to you whole as well. That that, that is one of the biggest things that are making our our families dysfunctional. You got two people coming together in fragmented pieces and oh, people geez. think that fragmented pieces make a whole, but they do not. Fragmented pieces make more pieces. <laughs> fragmented pieces make more pieces. It, and so then, so, so yeah. then you, <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Just not. And then, <laughs> then you raise kids who are in pieces, right? And then those kids go out into communities, and then we're trying to figure out what's going on. Well, mm, mm, mm. two people came together that was in fragmented pieces instead of doing the work on ourselves. No, we'll get together, and we're going to be whole. If you think somebody changes after marriage, I'm telling you they do not. As a matter of fact, fact what usually happens is they become worse because the paperwork becomes ownership and when you're dealing some with someone so if you're dating and i feel strong in my spirit it's some folks on here dating some people talk, and you've talk. obligated yourself more to that person than you should have one of the things that we do as women because there is a number of men lacking this we become wives when we really just girlfriends 
I'm sorry. Say it's it again. True. Say it, say we it become again. wives when we're really just girlfriends. And I'm only telling you this because I did this before I grew up in my maturity to understand value. Value. I know the word, and this is how we justify it. Oh, he who, who, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Correct. He who finds a wife. So we should be preparing ourselves. We should be guarding ourselves with truth. We should be coming to watch. But until the commitment is there and the commitment comes with love and the commitment comes with a ring until the commitment is there and the commitment comes with saying, I want to be there until he can love you what? like you, Christ loves the you church. You are teaching in this room. Until he can love you like Christ Lord, loves the church. If he has no evidence, if he's not sacrificing himself, if he's not putting himself out there, then sis, you don't become a wife while you're still a girlfriend. You, oh. you, don't, you, don't, you don't become, but because we're not healed and whole and we don't know that the love we need is the love that we need oh. to receive from our father and we won't stay patient in our singleness, just being real. We won't stay patient in our singleness. Yeah. We won't work on ourselves. We won't find our purpose because someone told us we were lacking and incomplete without a man. No, Genesis 2 and 18 says, I didn't mean for you to be alone. I'm paraphrasing. I didn't mean for you to be alone. I'm going to create you to be a helper, a suitable helper, a suitable mate, one that complements each other so that we can build and grow and chase and do kingdom from e for each other. Wow. But when we are in our singleness, because we don't spend any time being single, healed, and whole, right? And set free and really delivered. We go into relationships all the time and we accept little signs of stuff that have no substance to it. Baby, you can buy your own clothes. You can get your own nails done. That's right. Like That's right. You can do the things for yourself. He has to value you above tangible things. And so signs that I might not be ready to date is when I, and I need more time healing, is that I need to spend more time knowing that if this person comes into my life, they add value to me, I add value to them, and we're growing. But if I think this person is coming into my life to save me, um, to put, in, put me up on the horse and ride me off and all this other stuff, then I am gravely mistaken. Now, I will say this. When we do get married, our husband, I can teach a whole class on this. Baby, your husband will uplift you to another level if he loves you like Christ loves the church. He's going to take you to another level. That's just wow. what happens when a kingdom marriage occurs. But if wow. he's already displaying in his behavior that he's not for you, then he's not for you. And I don't wow. care what you tell me, and I know you can back me up in this, bro. A man knows within six months to a year if this is the woman that he wants to spend the rest of his life with. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. And I think that that's so critical to say because I do believe people are watching right now, Lakeisha, who are, and I talk to people all the time, who are in full-fledged relationship, years, not married, but they have made up their mind, the woman or the man, that I'm not going to marry this person. Yep. I, I, that they're not my, no, I, I know they ain't my, but, but are you missing your blessing? Are you missing what God wants to send? Because yes. You want, and you know what a lot of it is? It's security because he pays yes. bills or she's doing yes. something for him. Yes. So yes. It's, it's benefiting us to stay in something dysfunctional. Yes. Because there is something we're both receiving. What about kids Absolutely. that are involved? And yes. he pays all the bills. So we're cohabitating. Yes. Not married. But yes. if you, here's my thought. If you know they're not the person, if you know, and, and, and we know, we, we do know, those who are married, we, Absolutely. we, knew, we knew if it Absolutely. was a physical connection. Absolutely. We knew if it was just good sex. Absolutely. Come on now. Because good sex will keep people around. Say, say it one more time. You can good, play. I'm about, oh, okay. Right? Good, good sex will keep a Come person Come on now. Around. It's yes. taboo in the church, but let's yes. just be real. I don't yes. love you. I don't yes. care about you. Yes. I'm not going to be, but, but your, your sex is good. Yes. Yeah, and those and are the, the things same, that are kept saint, up bound. The saints going to log off now because they get offended. But that's, no, 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 no. And no. that's <laughs> the problem we're seeing. So why do you help that person, Lakeith? They're not going to be my husband. They're not going to be my wife, but I'm staying in there. And then when people do come our way, we, oh, I, 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 I'm in a relationship. Oh, I can't, uh-uh. You, you know, and all of these boundaries are set, and we're not married. 
And we're not really in a relationship. As I've heard okay. people say, we're in a situationship. It's right. a situation in which it's more toxic and it's evidence yep. and a sign that we are not healed and whole. When you are healed and whole, it looks different. There are boundaries, even in dating, there's sobriety there. You won't even, abstinence won't even be something you have to talk about. Abstinence will be something that you, you walk in just because you know of where you are with God and you don't want to disappoint the father. I've had That's people it. come to me and say, does the word really so talk about having sex outside of marriage? And I'm like, do we go to the same church? Yeah, the word is very clear, <laughs> right? But the society we're in, because sex has led us in so, we're over sexualized on TV, we're over sexualized in music, we're over sexualized in everything we see. Right. Sex has been the bargaining chip for our relationships. Well, when sex is the bargaining chips for your relationship, you're gonna have a problem. Now, I'm gonna be a little personal. The last two and a half years of my marriage, my husband was impotent. Talk I would it. not have been able to be healthy in our marriage if sex was the bargaining chip for our wow. marriage. Wow, things happen. Because things happen in a marriage. Come Pain on. happens in a marriage. Oh, Health happens in a marriage. So what kind of things I get on the forefront determines my stick to itiveness through, through where we are and what we're going. I saw somebody drop a question on closure. Closure, yep. I'm a cl I love closure. So let me just deal with this. I'm, I'm, I love to close. But here's the reality. Sometimes you might not be able to close. I, and I had to learn that, right? Because if the person is narcissistic, you're not going to be able to close with that person at, at, at all. You're not going to because they're not going to take ownership for their behavior. And if you're looking for that person to take ownership, so your closure and your resolve becomes this. Your closure is, this is not the person for me. This is not the relationship for me. God has a better relationship for me. Right. And that's where my focus has to become. And then I spend time building myself up in the word. We are so yeah, loose in the word talk, that the talk, enemy talk. comes in like a flood, right? The enemy comes in. Actually, the comma there says the word will come in like a flood and become a standard. But because we don't have enough word in us, the word can't come in like a flood and become the standard for our living, right? So then wow. we walk around sick, unhealthy, in unhealthy relationships because we haven't had the barometer. I have a policy, so, and one of my friends helped me with this, and this is just, I don't know why we got pulled in this direction, but somebody needs this. Talk, I have a talk. policy, for especially for my, my, my single people. He needs to go, or she needs to go through God to get to you. If that person is not willing to go through God to get to you, that's not the person for you. I'm not talking about going to church. Baby, I'm talking about laying on their face, petitioning God and asking God, is this the person that you want to spend the rest of my life with? Do I have what it takes, right? Because we all have a purpose and the person that comes along for you to be wow. bound with, they're supposed to compliment you and your purpose, right? I don't wow. care if you're just a stay at home wife, but that comes with being solidified in who we are with, with the word. I want to give you a couple of scriptures on healing yep. because Go people ahead. always say, Go ahead, sis. Yep. I don't know if the Lord wants us. Uh, I'll I don't take know, you know. Question. One more question for. I don't know if the Lord wants us healed. Um, if we supposed to be healed, I don't know if that's God's will. Exodus 15, 26, for I'm the Lord who heals you. Uh, that, Period. That's Bible. Bible. <laughs> I'm the Lord who heals you. If I'm the Lord who heals you, why would I want you to be sick? Right? Why would I not want you to prosper? Why would I want you not, not to be? Psalms 147 and 2. Well, I don't know if God wants to heal my broken heart. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. God will heal your broken heart if you give him the opportunity and chance. You just got to get to the point where you understand. And it takes time. What we're giving you today is just enough for you to press in the That's healing. Right. That's right. I'm not giving you all the strategies. I don't want you to get out here and go, be I'm healed. Because some is going to slap you in your face that's going to remind you <laughs> no, that you're not right. healed. There that's is right. a release and a grace on my life for healing that will impart something into your spirit. But that's you're right. going to have to continue 
to do the work on your healing, right? Wow, um, Jeremiah 3 and 22, my wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me and I will heal your wayward hearts, right? Get me, make me the focus, seek the kingdom first, and then I'm going to heal your wayward heart. He anointed us, he appointed us. There's a certain authority we get to walk in and heal it. This is my favorite, Matthew 11, 28, 29. Then Jesus said, come unto me, all hey, oh. you who are weary. That's if, good. Whatever the weariness is, and carry heavy burdens, and I'm going to give you rest. Come here. Bring me that mess. That's Talk good. to me about your brokenness. Talk to me about your failed marriage. Talk to me about your low self-esteem. Talk to me about your weight issues. Talk to me about how you haven't been a good parent. But what you're going to have to do is come see me and come talk to me. Come. That's right. That's you're going to have to come to me. That's the Bible. You're going to have to come to me. And we haven't been coming. We think because we go to church, we come. We don't come because we go to church. Wow. We come when we're exposed, when we're transparent, when we're broken. Absolutely, Oris. Psalms 46 and 1. Be still and know that I you know am God. That. The right. only way that you're going to know that I'm God is in your stillness, in your quietness. You're going to have right. to position yourself. My aunt teaches on personal prayer. You're going to have to position yourself in personal prayer and time before the Lord, letting him point the things out in your heart that do not line up with the word of God, which goes back to the beginning my responsibility of healing is to myself and it's not my responsibility to get anybody else healed the reason that we still have broken communities is broken people is because we won't take the ownership of our own responsibility for healing that's right one one we keep lying and having these super stereotypes like all things are good when all things aren't well that's so good that's good sis that's, that's the good. first thing that's, That's the good. stereotype. We want That's we good. want a Facebook stunt. We want an Insta stunt. We want everything to <laughs> to to look good for the community when our lives are failing behind the scene. Well, I don't believe that you have to put everything out on social media, but you do need to get in the secret place of the Most High. Get in the secret place. That's good. And dwell in the That's shelter good. of the Almighty and That's ask good. God for help. My healing began at the place that I said, Lord, I need your help. When we are prideful, we do it in our own strength, right? When we are humble, we know that the healing is not going to occur without God. At the moment that you lay yourself open before him and say, I'm sick of my relationship like this. I'm sick of my marriage. Show me me in this. I'm sick of being broken like this. I'm tired of, we are, when I meet people who are sad all the time, I feel so sorry for them because I know, and especially if I see them and they at church and they wow. serving and they mad or sad, I feel so sorry for them. And I'm filled with so much compassion because I know they don't know who the Lord is. I, I know they don't. I know they don't know who the Lord is. I oh, know that they don't because he promised us joy and he promised us sweet sleep and he promised, right? He gives us all these promises. And because they don't know the promises of God are yes and amen. Man, they think that they're supposed to be sullen and forlorn. I would not live on this earth and not experience kingdom. I would not. I, I he will. said, thy will. Mm -mm. He said, thy will be done on earth and heaven. He said, thy kingdom come. We're to bring kingdom to the earth. I We're agree. to bring kingdom to the earth. I, I will agree. not live on this earth and not experience my best life. When my husband died, no, let me back it up. When my, before my husband died, we lost the baby. When we lost the baby, and then my husband died. And then after my husband died, uh, my dog got killed that I had for 12 years, and I loved her. After my dog got killed, my aunt, who was only nine years older than me, had cancer, and she died. Before she died, right after she died, my grandmother died. So I know loss, right? Like, I know loss. And then I've had situations with my adult male children. I know loss. But the joy of the Lord is still my strength, my strength. and Lord. that is my resolve. That's good. Right? And you have to get that's a, good. and that's my last thing to you. You have that's to good. get a resolve. And this is going to take time. It's going to take time for you to get to this place. It's going to take time for you to be healed. But if you will commit to your healing, if you That's will good. say, you know what, no matter what, I'm not going to keep walking in the same broken state. I'm not going to keep repeating these same cycles my mom, my dad, and all of them did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start experiencing a victory in Christ Jesus. And the minute, for those of you who didn't know this, and I'm going to line it up with the word, and the minute that you do that, heaven will respond because there are angels. That's what Hebrews 1 and 14 That's says. Right. There oh. are angels. There are angels that are released on this earth that want to yeah. go do their bidding. They cannot do their bidding because we won't line up our word with the more with with with, with the word of God. 
That's we good. won't take God into every situation. My God, <laughs> that's yeah, it. Listen, listen, I, tomorrow, and somebody asked this question, how do I heal from losing a job via racial discrimination? I'm going to deal with that tomorrow. Good. I'm going to deal with that tomorrow because I'm having, I'm, I'm going to bring another guest tomorrow, Lakeisha. Yes, uh, yes. Lavelle, I see it. How do you deal with losing a job via racial discrimination? We're going to hit good. that question. We're going to hit that tomorrow. But yes. Lakeisha, I want you, I, I want you to have the final word and, and everybody, the 105 of you, 106 are on right now. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Over the last five weeks, I've had to, I had to do a eulogy for a 19-year-old, a 50-year-old, yes. a 22-year-old. On this past Saturday, Pastor Spriggs was with me. We had to, we had to do a eulogy for a 32-year-old who choked to death in her living room. Wow. 32 mm -mm. years old, young. Mm -mm. Tomorrow, mm -mm. tomorrow's mm -mm. Tuesday, I'm doing a funeral for a 23-year-old young man. Mm. And you said something, Lakeisha, and here's where I'm at. With my saved, with my pastoral self, I'm going to yes. live my life. Yes. I'm going to yes. live my life. I'm yes. not gonna, and Lakeisha, I had so many rejection and abandonment issues. And, and Lakeisha, I've been yes. told to shut up because I, t I tell people used to tell me all the time in ministry. Me because, too. Because we were trained and I don't train my leaders like this. I train. Yes. And, and, and I'm grown enough to defend my theology and my reasoning. Absolutely. Because we, we are trained as leaders, especially young leaders, to you keep your <laughs> life a secret. Don't tell people your business. Now, I believe that in part. I believe in part, I believe in, in part. part, but I do yes. believe that there is liberation and I will teach it Absolutely. until the day I die. And Absolutely. Lakeisha, I believe that my ministry, people ask me all the time, guys call me, what's the strategy for your church growing? I don't who are saying, Lakeisha, I can't keep me, a tune. Me and I, I don't, I don't yes. know no B flat. I, no. I, all I do know is this. I love people and I'm yes. transparent. Yes, and transparency and, I, and, and vulnerability do it. And, and you know what, Keisha? And that's what we're missing in the church. And I am I can see right through the fakeness. Yes. And I believe that we are we are wasting time. And we don't know when our day with death is going to come. Nope. We don't know when we're going to leave here. But I nope. refuse to live a lie. I refuse to walk around like I'm happy. And I and I have a discerning spirit. So I, me too. Like you see those people at your church? Who you yeah. I, I, I just want people to come and talk to me. Me too. Because, me because too. I see, I see you're not happy, and it ain't that nobody gossiping about you. I see nope. it. God has shown yes. it to me. And yes. Especially when you're a pastor, you know your sheep. Yes. You're when not you're really a pastor. Yeah. Yes. When you're not, you know your people. You know your sheep. Yes. And so I just want people to live because yes. life is short. I was talking to one of our staff members yesterday, who's ha who has a friend who's who, who who's dealing with sickness in her body. Her lung yeah. was removed, and she's yeah. dealing with some major health challenges. And I told her just yesterday, as I was encouraging her, man, we gotta live life. Yeah, yeah. And it starts today. Everybody listening yes. to Pastor Nate, it starts right now. Lakeisha Johnson is not on here, y'all, for show. Sure. This girl has a life. She has a ministry. She's been up early this morning ministering to people. We're not here to play games. No. We're not we after here to the get one. the highest ratings on Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely not. Come we on. after the one. That's not we, me. That's, we after the one. We, we out here to change lives, it, right? And, and I'm that, like you, my transparency is what God brought me to the platform. He told me, he, I'm bringing you to a place because you're called to a different generation. Yeah. And this was the thing that I was going to say. I've been watching your ministry grow. And I know why your ministry is growing. Because it's healthy. Healthy things grow. Wow. Healthy things grow. That, healthy, healthy things grow. And I'm gonna back that in word for people who question that. I want to give you this, and then okay. I know we need to go. I'm the true vine. Yeah. I'm the true vine, and the and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me that yeah. bears no fruit. With every while, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. That's you are good. already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Now remain in me, I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So you're growing because you're in him. You're growing because we re take our resting Jesus Christ, right? This is the part that I love. It says, if you do not remain in me, you are like wow. a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown in the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask, ask Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my 
Father's glory. It is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. It is to the Father's glory that you bear much fruit in your relationships, in your marriage, in your ministry. It is to your Father's glory that your, that things around you are prospering morning, and that yeah. healthy things are growing, right? So That's when I good. am pruned, Right. When God is telling me to come up a level, when God is telling me to mature, when God is telling me to grow up, when God is telling me to get healed, when God is telling me to tell my testimony as I am pruned and as I suffer and as I endure, I'm going to come forth as pure gold. There's four things that I live by. You're going to have to live with some patience. You got to patience. be consistent. You're going to have to persevere. And then endurance comes. Right. That's and good. at the point when endurance comes, you'll start bursting forth and your creativity comes alive. But you've got to recognize and realize. I want to say this to the man that even said with racial discrimination, I know you're going to deal with that. That job, no matter how much we loved it, no matter how much they assaulted you, we have to learn how to build force fields in the word. It does not matter what someone else says about you. Confidence is built from the inside out. That's, That's where true. confidence comes. It comes from knowing my righteousness in Christ Jesus. So when I understand God chose me, when I understand that I'm pointed, when I understand that I'm favored, when I understand wow. that I'm loved, when I understand that I'm redeemed, and I receive that to be my truth, not self. See, self-righteousness lets us take a position in man. We le wow. We're looking for other things to value. Yeah. But righteousness in Christ Jesus recognizes First of all, we can't pursue God in our, our sinful nature. It's not about acts, right? But right. it also turns, and so we don't justify ourselves in deeds. We understand that God wow. is good to us, and he's going to be good to us all the time, right? That's he's going to be good to us all the time. But we take our position and our stance, and you know what? I'm, I'm taking the burden off myself. <laughs> I'm taking the burden off myself from trying to get everybody else healed but myself. Wow. And I'm getting ready to walk in the <sighs> freedom. And it is not selfish for me to focus on myself. It is very selfish of me to continue to be sick, to continue to be toxic, to continue to be in relationships wow. and not wow. spend time. If you're on this call, you're on this call because you needed to be healed in some fashion. So now, fashion. how do I get to my healing. Remember, when I defined healing, how do I get to my original factory set? How God fashioned me in his image, which means I've got to deal with those things that are inside of me that I might not want to even deal with, but I need to deal with so I can be healthy, so I can be healed, so I can be whole. I had some of the worst self-esteem in the world. I had no value for myself. I tried the world. I thought even when, even after I was married to a most wonderful man, I tried marriage. I thought mar when marriage ended and my husband died and I still was broken, I knew that there was something else to it. My wow. children, when my wow. older children got up and moved on, right, I knew that there was something else to it, right? Wow. When, jo when God told me to walk away from my teaching position full time and that no longer defined me, I knew that there was something else to me being satisfied in life. And that satisfaction came in Christ Jesus. Wow. We love you. Listen. We Lakeisha, love y'all. Thank y'all. Johnson, listen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank grateful. you. Yes, I want you I'm to glad. Your, I want you to tell us your cash app again for those who want to sow. Yeah. Stay if you only if you feel like it. Only if the only Lord you pricks feel, your heart. There yeah. you go. There you go. Yeah. We don't ask for this. No. We do, we do offer the opportunity for those who, who want to sow into your life. And uh, Faith Room, come back tomorrow. We're going we're gonna to have another guest on tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you who but I want you to come back tomorrow to be a part of what we're doing. Lakeisha, we started this faith in. room with 35 people, 35 to 40 people every day. And God has breathed and continue to breathe. I want them to follow you. I want yeah. them to follow your ministry and what you're doing Thank every you. single day. You see her cash out. If you're led of God, be a blessing. For those yeah. 100 on now, thank you for believing in this room. We yes. are trying to get better. Life is but a bay for my friend. Listen to Pastor Nate. Yes. Live your yes. life. Get off of here and make some moves. Make yes. some changes. Yes. Don't get off here. And I tell my people all the time, Lakeisha, don't say the pastor told me uh, I was listening to this guest and they told me I should uh, maybe. what? No, this is for you. Yes. This, this, this is your life. And you take ownership of your life. Lakeisha, yes. I love you to life. Thank you, sis. No, love you guys too.
so very much. Will you close us in a word of prayer? And then I will. we will move into a, this will be a great day, everybody. Let's declare Absolutely. that right now. This will yes. be a great day. No drama, no mess, and no stress. No. Woman of God, pray us out. God bless. Fa Father God, we just thank you. Thank we you, thank you for the opportunity and chance in the faith room. We thank you, Father God, for you are the God that redeems the time. We thank you, Father God, for restoring us. We thank you, Father God, for uplifting us in the word. We thank you, Father God, for giving us revelation and new eyesight and ears to hear. Father God, we thank you, Father, that you said in the last days you will pour your spirit out upon all yes, flesh. So, thank Father God, Jesus. we thank you that your Hallelujah. spirit is in the room and it's moving Hallelujah. and it's breaking up fallow ground. We Hallelujah. thank you, Father God, Father. in the name of Jesus, that you're burning up the chaff inside of us, Lord God. We're la you, and we're coming God. to you boldly, Lord God, you, to Father. lay aside the weight, anything that's besetting us, Father. anything that's keeping us from walking in the fullness of who you called thank to be you, in Christ in Jesus. Jesus. We Hallelujah. release it to you right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father God, we drive out every force of darkness, yeah. all yeah, manner God. of sickness, yeah. all manner yeah, of God. disease, all manner of insecurity, all manner of low self-esteem. Sting, my God. God, anything that has kept us, kept us bound, God. Father God, all narcissistic behavior, Father God, even if we've been the perpetrator, Lord God, God, we thank you, Father God, that you are revealing it to us and that we are humbling ourselves, Lord God, and walking through the change you, that you called us to be in Christ Jesus. Now, Lord God, gird us with strength, gird us with truth, Lord God, and thank Holy you, Spirit, help us to overcome. Father, I thank you that you give us eyes fresh eyes Your to God. see Father God, yes. the broken places in us. Father God, I, I uplift Pastor Nate and Lady Z. I thank cover this ministry in the blood of Jesus. Thank I thank you, you no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Yeah, I thank you for the millions of souls that will be saved, their generational you, inheritance, yeah. Father God. Yeah. I thank you, Lord God, for resources and territory, you, Lord God. God. Yeah, Enlarge God. the place of their tent. Uh, Increase their you, capacity, Lord, Lord God, you, Lord. to do more for you. And I thank you that the leadership in place is in place. And I thank you, Father God, that the the ministry team is in place and I yes, thank you God. they will lack no good thing in Jesus name amen amen we love you have a great love y'all too everybody. all right y'all too peace peace everybody